Let's talk about some action items. There was one particular uh, woman on my feed that was like, I love all your science, but just tell me what to do. Like, give me the how. <laughs> so I'm going to give you the how and the now. So there are a couple of ways that I want to approach this. Um, the first is probably the most important and it's the one that everyone's going to hate. <laughs> and I say that with love because if you are someone who is trying to tackle perimenopause, you are trying to understand it, uh, it is very likely that, um, it is, we may be looking, and, and I, this was sort of evidenced by the questions that I had. It was like, tell me the one supplement. And let me tell you, we're going to go on a supplement geeky magic carpet ride today. Like I have some really great supplements that I want to talk to you about, but if you're looking only for supplementation, you're missing the point. Okay. So supplementation is important. Not saying that we're not going to supplement. However, we want to be thinking first and foremost, first and foremost, above all else, above all supplements, above, above all exercise regimes, above all nutrition, you want to be thinking about stress management. I know. <laughs> it's like, oh God, I have to think about stress. Just tell me the supplement. That's way easier, right? Um, but perimenopausal women, so a woman, let's say between the ages of call it 35 to 52, as we've been loosely defining, very unique time in her life where she has unique stressors that are coming from below and also coming from above. And when I say below, you know, maybe her kids are preteen teenagers in their 20s, you know, kind of depending on how early you had them. And they are, I mean, Lord knows teenagers. I mean, bless them. <laughs> bless their little underdeveloped brains, but they think that they know everything. And of course we know that they don't, right? So their frontal lobe is not developed yet, uh, but they certainly have the language acquisition. They can fight back and they, they usually have, um, you know, really smart mouths. They can, they know where to, they know what to say and they know how to hurt you. Uh, not speaking from personal experience at all. Of course I am. Um, but yeah, perimenopausal women, when we're thinking about stressors from below, you know, our kids can be as much as we love them this point, their transition into, you know, teenage, their teenage years and into their young adult requires them to kind of separate from us and to, in some, you know, in some cases rebel. And when we talk about rebellion, like really rebel. So I think for women, um, at least this is, seems to be consistent with a lot of the women that I talk to, that there's almost a grieving that happens, right? It's like our babies are no longer babies anymore. We have to, uh, you know, we might be find ourselves looking at baby photos or reminiscing. And I think that, um, you know, Jennifer Kalari, who I've had on the show twice, I uh, had her on a couple of years ago, but she's a fabulous resource for how to continue connecting with your teens. Actually, one of our episodes was just on how to connect with your teens. So we'll make sure that that, that, link, that episode's in the show notes. But... There's a grieving that has to happen where we are seeing our babies, you know, that we birthed, that were completely helpless and 100% dependent on us for their primary, for their survival. Now being able to go out with their friends and drive a car and maybe they're able, they're eligible to vote and all of these different things. And then maybe there's, they've fallen into some trouble. Maybe they're not, they're having challenges with school and God knows COVID didn't help with that. Thank you, government. Thank you, COVID. Thank you, lab leak, all the things, right? Like my, my teenager had a really rough go being at home. Like it really does matter for teenagers to be with their peers. So you may have had a teenager who really suffered during the pandemic Maybe there's some learning delays or gaps in their knowledge that shouldn't, you know, that you're trying to correct. Maybe they've fallen in with the wrong, wrong crowd. Like there's so many different permutations, but the point is, is that we have these stressors from our children. And then we also have stressors from above, right? So now 
uh, with us being in our forties, let's say 40, we'll call it just 45, sort of in the middle of 35 and 52, you know, or wherever you are in that, in that age range. Now we're starting to see our parents run into, or care, primary caregivers run into health issues as a function of aging, right? So we may see uh, more dementia. We may see, um, you know, diseases that we need to help support them with, or maybe we are ourselves becoming their primary caregivers. And so now we have this added stress. We have our teenagers or, you know, pseudo, you know, uh, not pseudo teenagers. What's the word there? Preteens. We have the preteens, the teenagers, maybe the early 20, like young adults, um, who, are putting, or there's an increased demand there. And then there's an increased demand from above with our, with our parents. So this is very unique because this is at no other time in our life was this ever really the case. When we first had our children, you know, hopefully your parents were a little younger. They didn't need as much attention, uh, didn't need as much assistance maybe that they do now. And so, where we used to be able to like deal with all of these different messes, we'll say, uh, chaos, entropy. Now we have this coupled with the hormonal changes that I was just describing with the decrease in progesterone and the decrease in ambition, decrease in drive, decrease in libido, decrease in all of these things that actually help us feel relaxed. Progesterone is now waning And now we just find ourselves unable to deal with the demands of the current stage of our life. So highly recommended here as an action item for you to figure out what are some of the stress relieving practices that you can engage in every single day, every damn day, Betty, okay, to help you feel centered in your body, but also something that is going to, uh, augment your resilience to stress that inevitably is coming at you that day, right? So just assume that there's going to be some demand from your kid, from your parent, from work, from partner, from whatever. Um, and then there's also very likely the accumulation of stressors that you have been, uh, you know, aggregating with you over the past, call it 35 years, right? So we have like new stress and old stress, right? And then we have kid stress and parent stress. So what that stress relieving, uh, practice is going to look like is going to be very different for everyone. But I do have some suggestions because this is really where I want you to have a flexible, open mind. And the, I'm inviting you, should you feel called to, um, you know, this is not a requirement, but if you, I'm inviting you, should you hear the call to play with some of the different, uh, stress management techniques. And I'll also share some of the things that have really worked for me. So many of my patients, many of the women that I speak to, uh, have found meditation and breath work to be incredibly helpful. And I would agree with them. Um, and again, I have a couple of resources that will make sure go in, into the show notes, but we've had Jen Mansell on the show. She is my breath work facilitator, best in class, in my opinion. We've also had Sam Skelly on the show as well. Another really great uh, breathwork facilitator. And then we've had Emily Fletcher on maybe one, probably two or three times now on the show on meditation.